It feels like every couple of years there's some online crusher that comes into the live realm and then either succeeds or doesn't. And it's always really interesting to see what happens. Of course, maybe the most interesting example historically is Isildur, who was Victor Blom in the end. And he had, I guess, a little bit of success uh, live, and he's still playing and stuff, but he's not the huge crusher that you might have expected yeah. him to be based on back in the mythos of his online days, right? Yeah. Today, that crusher is Linus Love. He is a young kid. He's 24 years old. He's been playing online since, what, 2013 or something? Yeah. And he's, he's now making his debut in these super high-stakes, high-roller events. He's playing a 55K Euro high-roller against the likes of Sam Greenwood here in Montenegro. Let's see how this kid does. Yeah, and just to give you guys a sense, in 2018, Linus Love was up over $800,000 online playing just Hold'em and PLO cash games and also won another half a million dollars winning the WCOOP 25K high roller event. This kid is killing it and is, is operating at kind of next level stuff. I think he's doing a lot of solver work and is, uh, is really owning the world right now. Right, and I guess owning the world a little bit is Steven Tixay because he suggested the hand. I However, guess. he decided to say when he suggested it that he thought we would just kind of flounder around and not know what to say. You know what, Steven Tixay? Screw you. Yeah. We're doing the hand, yeah. but we're giving you credit anyway. Thanks for the suggestion. Yeah. <laughs> we love you, and thank you for suggesting it on, on Twitter. At we are the Poker Guys on Twitter, including YouTube link and a timestamp when, when you suggest. It, yeah, whenever you guys have a hand to suggest yeah. for the breakdown, that would be grand. You know, just to change the subject yeah, for a second. Yeah, please do. You ever feel like singing? Mm, not as much as you do. I feel like singing all the time. Ain't nothing but a heartache, you know? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I, I'm going to need you to get to the point really quick. <laughs> the point is it's more poker, baby. Okay. That's uh, our sponsor, and they are the guys who, at the end of every month, have our fantastic Poker Guys Invitational. That's where if you use the link that we tweet out once in a while, you can enter. Well, you got to sign up for Nitrogen using that link, but then you can enter that a tournament every single month, and there's a thousand buy-ins guaranteed. There's only about 100, 120 players who play it each month. There's a massive overlay. Hey, let's not forget about the sports betting. Let's not forget about the casino games. Let's not forget about when Nitrogen pays out, they do it in 90 minutes, way faster than everyone else. It's the bomb. It is the bomb, as they like to say, in 1998, and you should get on Nitrogen and get you some poker. Let's get to the hand. It's in front of them. That's about $150,000 worth Thousand. of chips in front of him right now. <laughs> so Greenwood is going to open the button for Jack-8 suited. Linus Love going to call with six deuce of clubs. Very happy to play post-flop against these players. He's going to check the big blind. Greenwood's got the flush draw. It's very hard for his opponent to actually hit this flop. Especially a lot of players don't defend a three too much. But he does have the flush draw, so it's gonna get a little bit tricky. He does let Linus Love get there, hitting a pair of twos. And when Linus sees his opponent check back the flop, he might put him on a showdown value hand, like ace high a good amount of time. He might consider betting, he might consider checking. You can really see it both ways. Is going to bet for value 2,000. Very small bet. Trying to get called by ace highs. Greenwood's got jack eight. He's definitely not folding. He's debating whether he should consider a raise. Just going to call. This has certainly been an interestingly played hand by Sam Greenwood, which you could probably start almost any segment of any Sam Greenwood hand that we've done with. I mean, this is not nearly as interesting as, for example, the hand we're going to point to at the end, the ace-queen hand that Sam Greenwood oh plays, which is just absurd and insane. But let's talk about the most interesting thing so far, because opening is totally standard. But checking back on this flop is not something that you traditionally see in poker, right? Um, not that often. I mean, a 9-9-3 nine, nine, uh, flop is... Not really better or worse for any one guy than the other. Maybe slightly better for Linus Love. Because Barely. Linus has like some extra nines. Like he's got like the nine do suited of the world and things like that. The Sam's probably isn't opening a hand like that. Right, right but nine it's pretty suited. close. It's pretty darn yeah. close for sure. Um, but part of it is I think usually when the board is paired and it's below a 10, uh, a lot of the time anyway, if you're button versus big blind, 
the big blind actually has a huge range advantage if it chooses to raise, meaning it's really hard for the button to continue most of the time based on ranges. That said, Sam Greenwood could continue based yes. on ranges because he has the Jack 8 of Diamonds here. He has a flush draw, and of course, as you're mentioning and kind of implying, Linus has plenty of bluffs here as check raises, and that's perfectly fine for Sam as well because he doesn't have to improve to win some of the time then. He can later bluff. Um, that's true. Um, at the same point, I can understand when Sam is up against a guy who's going to be more balanced here, he's going to be more apt to check it, as opposed to against people who are more straightforward, who when they check raise, they have it way too often or not nearly enough, where he can three bet the guys who don't have it nearly enough, or fold against the guy, maybe not in this case with the flush draw, but look to fold and not try and bluff guys later on who are more straightforward and just always have it. Linus Love is going to be much dif more difficult to play, and Sam just decided to defer that decision and see the turn. I don't think it's crazy. I don't think it's crazy. I don't want to go too in-depth on this, because we did it on our podcast, but to the, to the point of balance here, I don't think necessarily that being balanced, being against a balanced player means you can't bet the Jack 8 of Diamonds specifically here, because you have to be balanced as well. You have to bet some things that don't have any showdown value currently, and a non-showdownable diamond draw seems like something that would make sense in that range. I mean, I think it's really close. I imagine he's betting some of the worst non-showdownable diamond draws, the 4-5 of Diamonds and things like that. Um, maybe Jack 8 is just high enough, and of course, it does bring a lot of deception if we were to make our flush as Sam, it's going to be really hard for Linus Love to put us on that unless Linus Love knows we're just checking so many diamond draws. It's going to be hard for him to believe that. It's going to be tough. Anyway, if you want to hear a lot more discussion about how Sam Greenwood could possibly be balanced by checking back this flop, check out our podcast where we went in more depth on that. We're about done with it here, though, for the video. Yeah. Let's get to the turn where Linus bets his deuce. This is kind of a mostly protection bet when he bets 2k into 7500 right like he expects oh. sam to show up with some random hands like he has where you wouldn't really expect like a diamond draw but say like jack eight off sometimes sam's going to check that back because of the perceived range advantage as well so he's just protecting against hands like that he expects to get some value out of ace highs of That's course the thing. if I sam th checked back i think it's more than just protection although it's a little bit of that i think a lot of it is trying to get value out of ace highs um, with the sizing that he chooses and things like that, I think he's just saying, like, you're just going to be forced to call with some of your hands. Uh, yes, you do have to fold some too, and that's great, because I don't mind you folding, but getting called by a worse hand is pretty good when you only have one card to come, and Linus Love knows it. Right, and that all makes sense. It's fine. Should Sam consider raising the turn here? That is a pretty interesting question. He should at least consider it, right? Um, the problem with raising the turn is, man, is Sam polarized so hardcore when he checks the flop and raises turn. Well, maybe a guy like Sam isn't, you know. He's going to have probably, he's going to have all the lines in the world in his arsenal, yeah. right? So he's probably got a lot of check back and then raise the turn lines. And he's going to have some hands that aren't completely polarized, I would imagine. But he might have plenty of nines in his range doing that, by the way. Sure. And if he has good nines, uh, he could certainly raise the turn with some of those. Um, the problem is a guy like Linus Love, if he doesn't believe the story, might fire back. And he's the kind of guy who does, as opposed to, again, most of the players, even the good players, don't like fire guns like crazy. But Linus Love, just so you guys know, is one of the great online players currently in the world. He crushes the cash games. He just won a huge, or last year, I guess, he won a huge high roller. He's, he's crushing everyone. So I think it's not crazy to be slightly more careful here. Being in position with, admittedly, a hand that needs to improve to win almost always is not, it's not great, but it's not too bad either, especially when it's this cheap for Sam to call. I certainly don't hate this call by any means. No, it, neither do I. I just wanted to explore a raise. It's and a I, reasonable thing to consider raising. And I think it's a dangerous path to walk down what you're saying here, where you're against a good player, that means you should never raise. I don't, think, right. that, I don't think that's a good point. I you're don't right. think that's something that you should really consider when you're deciding whether or not to raise against a player. It should just be based on how you want the hand to play out and what you think is optimal. Right, but against a good player, you usually have to tell a better story. And like a 993 nine, check back raise turn, now you're saying I have trip nines or full house. That's like your entire range, right? Well, that's, I mean, sort of, but Linus Love is certainly aware of Sam Greenwood, and Sam Greenwood is always telling weird, bad stories. So I think he has a little bit of leeway where other players may not. I think it's possible Maybe. that a raise is a better play. I think calling is fine, but yeah. I think as Sam, with his reputation, it's possible that raising might be better. You might have more fold equity than you think. Hmm. River card is to eight. The green one is going to make the best hand. So Linus Love here. When he bet the turn, he put his opponent ace high. He might not think that eight is a that bad of a card for him. It's hard to imagine your opponent having an eight to check back the turn and get there besides like ace eight. But green one's pretty tricky. He actually has jack eight. So he is going to bet really small here, trying to get called. I like ace king, ace queen, ace jack. Greenwood now, when he sees these very small bets, this might be tempted to put in a raise here. 
thinking that Linus would go for more value if he had a full house or trip nines. He just needs to decide whether Linus would do this to induce a bet sometimes. And let's <coughs> to raise. There we go. Greenwood's played this hand. Pretty tricky. Linus knows that when he bets out small on the river, he does induce bluff raises. So he needs to be a little bit careful. Can't be like, oh, he raised. He must have me beat. In this instance, he actually is beaten. So this is a shot clock tournament, 30 seconds. Everybody starts with six shot clock extensions. Mm -hmm. They get three more when registration closes at the end of level 10. Yeah, otherwise you got to bust to get more time bank chips. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it works for regular chips as well. All right. 48. Oh, my. Look at this play. The re-raise. So he, he led Again, option C. Yeah. <laughs> this is not... This is some great poker right now. So the thing is, Linus is almost certain that Greenwood does not have a 9 because he didn't bet the flop. That's why he's making this big play at him right now. He looks, it's kind of like, well, if my opponent's bluffing, he's going to fold anyways. But if he's trying to make a thin value bet here, like with an 8, he's in a very tough spot. And he made it very big to kind of help make it a bad price for his opponent. I'm loving this hand. We can do one more raise if we want. I know, what a display. If this hand ends in anything but a fold from either player, that will just be the absolute cherry on top. Wow, so... Mm. It's a shot clock. Greenwood lays it down. Sam Greenwood was doing what is called a thin value attempt, and then he got what is called destroyed. Wrecked. Wrecked. <laughs> just obliterated by Linus Love. Now, I mean, it's not that extreme, but... It is a very interesting spot here. Linus chooses, once again, very small sizing, 2,500 into 11.5. Maybe that's what induces Sam. I'm not sure if Sam would have raised anyway. If Linus bet like five or 6K, it's possible. We less, don't, less likely. Less likely, for sure. But we can see Sam's thought process. We can see the wheels turning here, thinking, okay, I can't let this kid get away for this amount when I rivered a pair that is likely to be good a lot of the time unless this kid has a nine, right? Right, and he just thinks Linus is usually going to choose bigger sizing with bigger hands. Right. So now he's now he's just sitting there like, I guess once in a while this kid has a weird eight that's beating me that you know he was bluffing the turn with. But mostly, especially with the sizing, on the even on the turn, it's very unlikely. It looks like the kid has just what he has, like a deuce or a tray or something like that, maybe pocket fours, pocket fives, pocket sixes, but hands that are pretty darn weak but are trying to squeeze just the little bit, little as tiniest bit of extra juice of value out of ace high. And by the way, like you were saying on the turn, Sam Greenwood is now telling a bad story, which is kind of a cool thing to do with this depolarized raise with an eight here, because yeah. like you were saying, you were worried that Linus was going to react aggressively to bad stories, right? So on the river, he may react with a call with some of the showdownable hands against this bad story that Sam is now telling, because what the hell is Sam representing now, right? I mean, in theory, yes, but then the other thing I was saying, of course, is what if he doesn't react that way? What if he reacts with guns ablazing like he ends up doing, right? And I think what, what ultimately happens is Linus Love is sitting there thinking, okay, when I bet two and a half K on this river, a wide swath of hands are gonna raise me. Some hands that I'm beating, some hands that are ahead of me, but not way ahead of me most of the time. And of course, a few hands that are way, way, way ahead of me. And Linus doesn't know if a call is gonna be profitable enough because some of those hands are beating them. Some of those hands have eights in them or two sevens or something like that. Maybe even over pair like two tens. Right. Um, and so Linus wants to knock out just so many of those medium strength hands. And as you see, he's very successful doing well, that. The thing that is so cool about this is Linus probably has to know that Sam is capable of thin value raises either based on the sizing or based on reputation or something in order to make this raise profitable because if Sam is more polarized here, 
this is either a call or a fold, right? right? But if Sam is capable of these thin value raises, then there's a lot of hands that are beating Linus that are also going to fold to this 3-bet, which make it profitable. So that makes it really interesting, because if Sam's a normal guy who's only going to have ace-nine plus for value here, then this is probably either right. a call or a fold, right? Right. But, but, it, but it's all about sizing, ultimately, right? Yeah. So, like, because Linus bets 2.5K, he knows that opens up Sam's range, Sam's raising range. His so value raising range in particular sure. is the important side right, here. Right, right. That's exactly right. So there's a lot more medium strength hands in there, which does make sense. I think lots of good players are going to raise medium strength hands. They're thinking they're ahead and trying to squeeze a little extra. And in fact, that's a profitable move for them against most opponents, but maybe not against the big LL himself. Linus Love. Yeah, I guess he sussed it out or decided I'm the guy who takes it to the next level right now. You right. guys aren't ready for this level because you guys are all trying to get thin value in these spots that look super cool, but guess what? I'm super cooler than you. Also, a little bonus here, tiny little bonus, is that Linus blocks deuces full, which yeah. Sam may play this way some of the time, right? Yeah. So that helps. Small bonus, not a, not a huge bonus. It blocks three combos total of the value, but still, it doesn't hurt. And the last question is, is Linus re doing a good job representing a big hand here? And I think the answer is probably yes. I mean, all he did was check the flop and then bet the turn, and now he's betting the river. He could easily have 8-9. It probably is yeah. the best hand he could show up with, but he could have a bunch of full houses. So it's a story that's good enough for Sam, at least, and it's good enough for me, too. I would have folded as well. 8-9 would be a pretty good hand to show up with. It would be the nuts. Yeah, it would be a pretty it, good it hand. Would, you wouldn't hate that. Yeah. So we have decided to look at this hand and really see it as um, two high-level players clashing, much like Godzilla and the three-headed dragon thing from the most recent movie. Absolutely. Uh, or Kong, if you want to look forward. Uh, Kong. Yeah, King Kong. King Kong. It's coming like in March. Anyway, uh, see it at your local theaters. Uh, so King Kong. <laughs> thank you. What, why do you keep saying that? <laughs> I'm helping. <laughs> I'm, like, I'm like a hype man. <laughs> <laughs> What was that? Oh yeah. So we were saying that these are like two two galactic giants um, going at it. Galactic. Not giants. everyone might necessarily agree, and some people might even say we're giving them too much credit. Hmm. Um, what do you think? Do you agree with us that this is just two high level players kicking it, and they're two clearly very successful players? Do you like all these decisions? Do you think Sam should be raising the river? Do you like how Linus is sizing both turn and river, even though it ultimately worked out? Do you like Linus's decision to three bet that river? I know it worked, but do you like it? Do you think it's gonna work over time enough to be profitable? And finally, and this is one of the big things we talked about a lot, do you like Sam's decision to check that flop with the yeah. flush draw? You know, he bets that flop, he usually just wins. That's true. I'm just saying. Instead, he gets embarrassed by the poker guys. Embarrassed. Yeah. No, of course, Sam Greenwood could never be embarrassed. Anyway, <laughs> what, what, what might embarrass Sam Greenwood, in fact, is this hand right here. <laughs> I mean, this is... Look, nah. Sam Greenwood's on another level, and this is certainly a hand that is very confusing, and maybe one of the hands that we were able to figure out the least, but still it's worth examining because of the crazy batshit insane stuff that Sam Greenwood does. You have to check it out. Somehow, he starts with 11 blinds, and still all of those things I said apply. Yeah. That's absurd, right? You know, if you're watching uh, the hand we just showed you, at the end you may say, wow, Sam Greenwood, how can he fold? Good segue. Thanks a lot. That's the name of our book. Yeah, we have a book. Yeah, and it's uh, 37 hands that we have a conversation about uh, where we're breaking down all the different decisions as we go through. They're short, bite-sized chapters. It's a lot of fun. We were spent like a year working on it. Yep. And uh, it's at thepokerguys.net. We also have a link in our description. We encourage you to go check it out. We have e-copies. We have paperback copies. It's a great book. I'm just saying it makes a great gift. It is great, and it has varying levels of complexity. We start with the very easy hands, although there's still a lot to be learned there, all the way to hands that even when we were editing the book for the last time, we had to read over multiple times to understand what we had said because yeah. we had spent so long trying to figure out the nuances of the hands. We think it's a great gift or a great purchase for anybody at any level of poker. Check it out.